Well, how important is it to have Ozzy back in? For uh, it's important to have Ozzy back because he's an important member of our team. But uh, the most important thing right now is we need to play better soccer than we played in Montreal. You know, that was a disappointing effort on our part. Uh, I know the team's not happy with it, and uh, we've got to you know, put the ship right on, on Wednesday. But Ozzy gives you what that uh, maybe wasn't missing at that level. Well, you know, I mean, Ozzy obviously brings a certain uh, tenaciousness onto the field, and uh, his ability to recover the ball is an important aspect for us. But, uh, you know, uh, so he's going to help us. He's going to make us better. Uh, would we, would the result have been the same in Montreal with him or without him? That's tough to say. Uh, but certainly it, it, it was more than just one position or one person. Does he need to rein it in at all, or is that just a one-time thing that foul that I I don't think so. I mean, you know, I mean, from a standpoint of of that tackle, that's what they looked at. I mean, I don't think his tackle was any worse than Rivas's tackle was on Montero. So we'll see what the league does with that one. But uh, uh, you know, I think there have been examples of those kind of situations throughout and throughout the year, uh, and obviously suspensions throughout the year. So I think Ozzy Ozzy knows what he can and can't do. His timing of tackles is usually very good, and he's got to make sure that you know there's not there's not uh, you know, tackles don't involve retaliation or, you know, bad timing. Did you think of Machado's uh, red card, and did you guys end up appealing that? No, I mean, you know, I, I don't think it was a red card, in, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, because I think he, he was going for the ball just as, as Warner was going for the ball. He got there late. Warner got to the ball first. And, and I think you could already see Kennedy sort of turn out of it, you know, trying not to hit him. I think he was more trying to avoid it than going through it. Uh, but it's also one of those that, you know, appealing it probably isn't, uh, isn't the smartest thing to do because it's not one of those clear-cut, uh, cut-and-dried cases where you could say, okay, it's mistaken identity or that definitely, you know, obviously, you know, there was no contact or something. For sure there was contact, uh, but I don't think it was uh, the blatant intent that, uh, that you would expect a red card to be. Sometimes it seems maybe a young player's trajectory is sort of a fast start and then maybe a step back before going on again. Are you seeing that at all with Brian Murray? Yeah, I mean, it's possible. I mean, you know, he's a young goalkeeper and his calm and uh, and his demeanor are one of his strengths. Uh, you know, but uh, you know, and on the first goal, I don't think there's much he could do. On the second goal, the same because the angle that Map's coming in, you know, he can bend it far post on him. Uh, the third goal, he's got to save. He knows that, you know, and he'll be the first one to admit that. So, uh, you know, it's it just sometimes, you know, sometimes things aren't falling your way. You know, sometimes it's good to take a step back. Uh, sometimes you need a little bit of a talking to. You know, what that final answer is, we'll know on Wednesday, but it'll be one of those three. Anything clearer on Gisperning or Zakawani or any of the guys? Uh, Gisperning's making, uh, continues to make headway, did more today than he's done. Uh, you know, Zakawani, uh, you know, is definitely improved his training and so forth. He's taken another step forward. Uh, you know, not for sure, not 90 minutes or anything like that fit, but. Uh, you know, he stepped forward. Ayani was in full training today. Johansson was pretty much in full training. We actually only had him out of the 11 v 11 because we wanted Dave to test him. Uh, so he's pretty much back, and Leo was back as well today. So. Ayani, Leo available? Uh, available if we choose to. Yeah. Is Zakawani an 18 candidate? Uh, not sure yet. With the Strada's injury, that's probably going to mean some sort of increased role for Ochoa some point, I imagine, with the busy schedule. What have you seen out of him in terms of his improvement this year? Well, Choa is, you know, I mean, Choa is a, a, you know, what you would call in Europe or in Germany, we call him, you know, uh, well, in German, it's called a knipser. It's somebody who takes, like, photographs. You know, it's like somebody who's just in the 18-yard box and looks for his little opportunity and bang, you know. And that's the way Ochoa is. He's, he's a penalty box forward. He's, uh, he's the kind of guy who looks for those little openings, little opportunities, and, and he's pretty good at finishing when he gets them. I mean, like the last goal he scored today at practice, you know, was one of those situations. But there's other times where you scratch your head a little bit and you're saying, is he doing enough? Is he working enough? You know, uh, other things that you need at that moment. But, uh, you know, he's definitely shown an ability to finish. He's always had that. Are you seeing less of the head scratching moments, more of the good? <laughs> yeah, you know, obviously with Estrada out, we see more of the good. No. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, you know, he's, he's worked and, you know, he's gotten himself fitter and those things are all there. You saw with the, you know, with the two goals he had against Atlanta in the Open Cup, you know, so he's, he's going to play some key minutes for us as the games start piling up here. 
we said after Saturday's game that the team kind of started playing after the 20th minute. What is the reason for these slow starts and these losses? Do you have any idea why? We talked about that a little bit today, uh, you know, as a group and as a team and said, hey, you know, that's something we've got to change and, you know, you know, why are we falling into that? So, so there's certain thoughts, certain ideas that we have at, at, at this point, you know, uh, you know, we feel our warm up is is adequate. The guys feel good about that. You know, so we talked to them. Well, what do you think would get you more ready? We think, you know, the time between the end of the warm up and the start of the game. But uh, I think more than anything, it's just been our mentality right now, and we have to we have to change our mentality. I think we got off to such a good start. You know, and it was you know, as everybody said, the best start in franchise history. And what happens then is invariably, you know, you pat yourself on the back a little bit and, and you, you know, you read the Seattle Times and you read the, you know, Tribune and you say, hey, uh, you know, pretty positive, you know, and, and you just subconsciously relax a little bit and we got to get out of that relaxation mode. And one last question about the officiating, you know, when you have like a plate, um, you know that sometimes they have a larger strike zone than the other, but how difficult is it when one referee in the the one game has so many inconsistencies. Does that make it difficult on a coach and a player? I, you know, I don't want to say a lot about the refereeing because <laughs> I get in trouble if I say a lot. You know, I mean, the thing is, uh, the the thing that bothered me the most was uh, was uh, you know the treatment of the fourth official. I thought was pretty bad. You know, I know people said I got all over the fourth official, and I did in the second half. Uh, but at that point, he'd already had an earful, uh, and it wasn't from me. And, and the big thing was, you know, at the end of the first half, you know, where the opposing coach, you know, walks, you know, walks 40 yards with the referee off the field talking to him. You know, I haven't seen that in, uh, ever in MLS. And, uh, and that really uh, ticked me off, you know. And when I tried to talk to him after the game, uh, I wasn't afforded the same opportunity. You know, apparently my voice was too loud or I had raised it, but it's tough to talk to somebody when they're walking away from you. Uh, you know, but in this case, somebody was walking in together, and I, I thought that was unusual, and that's what really got my dander up. And then afterwards, in the second half, and all of a sudden, the red card comes, and then calls are going against us. You know, and a guy like Colin Warner, who committed, I think, five fouls in the game, you know, he would have fouled out if he was a college basketball player. Uh, <clears throat> you know, and every foul he made was whenever we got a step on somebody in midfield. He would nick somebody, and 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 that never warranted a yellow card. And I thought repetitive fouling. And for sure, we fouled Felipe Martins a few times. And but our guys also ended up getting two yellow cards, you know, for those fouls. So uh, I, I just felt, you know, there wasn't uh, parity, I guess, at, at that point. So there is, there's no written rule that you can a coach can't approach it. I always thought I always thought that you're or not supposed rule. to go into that area, and for sure you're not supposed to go walk off with the official. I mean that's what I was always told. You know, it was always, you know, like I've gone on there to get my players away sometimes, and I'll shake his hand and I'll make a comment, but I've never walked off the field with a referee because uh, I thought that was never really what was allowed. Wow. Looking at Kansas City, kind of the success they've had one more or less year, maybe calendar year. Kind of what's, what's been the key? They're just a very aggressive uh, um, team. You know, I, I was going to say attack-minded, but when you look at their goals scored, it's not like they've scored that many more goals than somebody else has. But uh, they're very aggressive in terms of their overall approach to the game. They're aggressive defensively. Uh, they run all over. They try and high pressure. They're aggressive offensively. Uh, they're a big team. You know, I think when they have all their weapons, I think each one of their forwards is, a, is, is bigger than six foot. Uh, I think you look at their uh, at their two central backs are both bigger than six foot. Their central defensive midfielder is bigger than six foot, so they're a big team. Uh, they try and throw the ball in the box. I mean, anytime they get a free kick, anything from midfield on in, you know, Graham Zuzi who serves a good ball is going to knock it into the box. It goes out of bounds. It's a long throw in. So they're trying to cause havoc in your box whenever possible, and hope through that pressure that eventually a mistake occurs. So they're a very aggressive team offensively and defensively. You just play five tomorrow. Uh, yeah, if he gets back, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you go. And play for African countries. You know, it's just the travel arrangements. Getting back, it's not the, it's not the easiest thing in the world because sometimes you got to fly from Africa to Europe and then Europe uh, back to the States. And so I'm sure they'll evaluate how he is and how he's recovered. Was that Dwayne Smith out here today? No. You have resolution on Dwayne Smith's 
situation? Uh, we've talked to him. We're trying to get a hold of his coach right now, but he's under contract to, to Pittsburgh at the moment. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's nothing that we have right now, and Adrian and Chris are gone. So once they come back, we'll, we'll get something closer. Anything else? I got one. Like the, uh, it's two DP wide midfielders. I mean, what have you seen in terms of them not being more productive maybe in, in the last few weeks, months? It's been difficult, you know. I mean, it's been difficult. Morrow's, you know, had had the different injuries, you know, the knee injuries and so forth, you know. So it's been tough for him to find a rhythm, you know, as he was able to find last year, uh, you know. And I, you know, and I think also based on the amount of times he's gotten kicked, he's maybe a little gun shy, a little bit because, you know, you know the way the opponent is, is sort of treating him. Uh, Flacco as well had the injury with the quad, and so he hasn't really found his rhythm. So, for sure, when you look at numbers and production, it's not as great as it was last year. Uh, but I think uh, a, you know part of that is explained just because of their injuries and them not being able to get into a really good rhythm of play. Give your full 90 with the Sounders FC mobile app featuring live audio, match day blog and much more to keep you connected. Download your app at soundersfc.com mobile.